Well, we're on lesson 41, and we were talking about angels and how during this time in history, angels were appearing. So, what are angels? Well, angels mean uh, messengers. Well, here I have some pictures or some little statues, I should say, of angels. Do you think they look like that? Well, I don't know. I don't really think they had wings, really. Cherubim had wings. Here's a cute little angel, and she's a Native American little angel. I love that one. People like to think about angels and uh, because, you know, they're supernatural. They're coming from heaven. And the Bible says that angels are watching on, watching us, cheering to cheer us on in heaven. I wonder how that looks. But anyway, um, we're going back to history. See, 400 years had passed since the last prophecy and since God had spoken. For 400 years, they were waiting for God to do something, for a Messiah. For 400 years, many had forgot that God had prophesied these things for a Messiah to be born. But Gabriel comes and appears. Gabriel appears Again, you see, he appeared in history before. We know he, he appeared to Daniel in the book of Daniel as a messenger. Now, angels, let's go back to angels. He was a, Gabriel's a major messenger. Some angels are military angels. They fire battles in heaven. That's what the Bible says. And some are ministering angels. They would come and minister, like for Elijah, you know, minister to him, bring him food or whatever, ministering to people. But we're going to talk about specific, a specific angel named Gabriel, a messenger. He comes to a young woman, a young woman who is only about 15 or 16 years old. But she's a special girl. Yes, she is. For God has chosen her to be the mother of the of Jesus the Messiah she lives in the city of Nazareth was Nazareth was not a major city in fact later on one of the um, disciples would say what good would come out of Nazareth it wasn't considered like a, a major hub or that there's anybody lived there that was famous at all um, and, but this young girl, she was engaged to be married. Um, but and she was waiting, or probably her heart's desire to have children. But in this way, as, as the mother of God, can you imagine? Well, Gabriel came to, to Mary and, and told her that she would conceive and bear a son. He said, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be the son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. So you can imagine, when I going to think about Mary, she had a very devout heart, and the, the, they believed that the that the Messiah would come from a virgin birth. She knew the scriptures well and the prophecy, but you can imagine that she would be a little bit fearful, you know. But she was faithful to follow God. But and but this Savior would not only be saving the world, saving Israel, but would be saving her from her sin. And she rejoiced. There's a song that talks about Mary, and I'm going to read the words. I love the song, so sometime I want you to get on your, your iTunes and listen to it. It says, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? 
Mary, did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect Lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Wow, do you think maybe she thought of these things? Well, I'm sure she did. You see, Mary knew all this, but to happen to her, how special, but how um, uh, um, fearful or how upset she might be too, thinking, me? What am I gonna have to do? What am I gonna have to go through? What does this mean? Well, Mary, we're, t we're talking about Mary. The angel knew that Mary would need some encouragement, I believe. And so God would send her to her cousin, her husband Elizabeth and husband Zacharias. They lived in the hill country of Judah. Um, Elizabeth was expecting a baby which was a miracle because Elizabeth was past the age of having babies. She was older and Zacharias wasn't able to speak. Well, why was he unable to speak? Well, Zacharias, uh, a few months earlier, he was in the temple in Jerusalem. He was of the tribe of Levi and a priest. And he was, uh, uh, during the temple service, he was there. Um, he had uh, Gabriel, an angel, appeared to him and told him that he was going to have a baby, a baby boy. And this baby would make ready the, to prepare the way of the Messiah or the way of the Lord. Zacharias was like, really? How could this be? Are you certain? Are you certain you have the right person? Or my, my wife is pretty elderly. He didn't believe. So um, Gabriel got a little bit perturbed with that. And um, the Lord actually made him not able to speak, Zacharias not able to speak until the promise would be fulfilled. So when Zacharias came out of the temple, he couldn't talk at all or tell anyone exactly what had happened. Well, Elizabeth did conceive. And so as Mary came to meet Elizabeth, she, Elizabeth, can you imagine, ran to her. And as she ran to her and he stood with Mary, the baby in her womb leapt for joy, it says. And Elizabeth knew that Mary was, was going to bear the Messiah. And she said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Luke 1, 42 through 45. <laughs> Mary was excited then to be able to share with her with one person. I'm sure she shared with her mother or, or um, wanted to share with um, Joseph, but she hadn't yet. So to share with her heart with Elizabeth would be very, very special. In fact, Mary's song, we call it Mary's song or the Magnificat, the Magnificat, that's what they call it. And it's what Mary said, and it's recorded in the Bible. She says, <clears throat> I need to get a drink of water here. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant, and for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. Oh, Mary was excited. And now to return, she was there, um, the, uh, she was there, um, and seeing Elizabeth, and seeing Elizabeth's baby being born. She stayed there for three months, and Elizabeth gave birth to his son. And the people asked Zacharias, what is your son's name? So Zacharias went and he wrote down John, J-O-H-N, just like the angel had told him to name him John. And at that moment, he could speak again. Can you imagine? <laughs> he probably just totally rejoiced and, and was so excited being able to speak and know that just as the angel had told him what happened. <coughs> now Mary returns to Nazareth. Yes, she has to tell Joseph. She's expecting a baby, in fact, the Messiah. What do you think Joseph felt at first? He thought, really? Is she crazy or something? Or what is she trying to do? So an angel, another messenger, as we're talking, visits Joseph in a dream. He says, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 20 through um, 21. Joseph takes Mary as his wife and obeys the angel. Joseph, who's Joseph? He's a carpenter. He's very humble. He's, and he, but he's very devout, and he loves the Lord, and he is chosen too. Mary and Joseph's ancestry, if they had to go to Ancestry.com or something, they'd find out that their ancestry came from King David from the town of Bethlehem. That would be very important. You see, um, they lived in Nazareth, but God would move them to Bethlehem. How? There's no reason they would want to be moved to Bethlehem, but God used the Roman Caesar Augustus. Can you believe that? God moves the hearts of kings, you know. So God would move them to Bethlehem. How? The, um, the decrees of a census. Augustus, he wanted to count all his people in all the Roman Empire. So he put forth a census and he said all the Jews would have to go back to their city of their tribe of their ancestors, ancestors to be registered. They'd all have to register. So where would Joseph and Mary have to go? To Bethlehem. You see, the Bible said, Messiah was going to be born in Bethlehem, not in Nazareth. Although later on it does say that Jesus would be a Nazarene. So, hmm, now what's going to happen? Joseph and Mary start on their voyage to Bethlehem. A rough voyage, you can imagine. A pregnant woman on a donkey riding about 70 miles or so from Nazareth to Bethlehem over quite a rugged terrain. We'll see. You know what's going to happen next.